well in the first edition of my why I will not be voting Republican in 2024. It's because of this little thing. It's not so little, but it's annoying. It seems there's a pattern that's emerged. It's completely reckless, irresponsible, but nevertheless, the Republicans have charted down its trajectory. What is this pattern that I speak of? Well, it's the pattern of being, simply put, a sore loser. Yeah, I don't like sore losers, by the way. <clears throat> you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. It just par for the course. It happens to us all. It's no sense in, you know, being a sore loser, though. Because you make yourself always look bad. And it's hard to come back when you make yourself look bad. Donald Trump was the first politician that I could remember at the federal level deciding that he was not going to accept the legitimate elect, the legitimate result of a free and fair election. Yeah, he was the first one I can remember. Now, the Supreme Court in 2000 had to determine who won the presidency under Bush v. Gore. However, Al Gore accepted the results of the 2000 election. The 2004 election, it was very close. It came down to Ohio. One state, John Kerry accepted the results of a free and fair election. 2016, 10,000 votes in Detroit, 10,000 votes in Milwaukee, 10,000 votes in Philadelphia. That's all, 20,000 in Philadelphia. That's all that separated Donald Trump from winning those states and Hillary Clinton from losing them. That's it. So, this notion that just because an election is close, you don't accept the results because there could potentially be election fraud. It's ludicrous. It's ridiculous. And so we saw a Republican president do it in Donald Trump. I knew it was bound this way because that's what happened. When one candidate does it, especially at that level, other politicians are going to follow suit. Fast forward to 2022, the Arizona gubernatorial race. Katie Hobbs versus Carrie Lake. Carrie Lake says that, you know, she didn't lose the election. There was election fraud. And so, therefore, she should be governor. Now, she was never able to prove election fraud. There were election irregularities, meaning that there was a situation with one of the printers. They fixed it and moved on. They kept polling locations open for the hours that that issue was the case. To my knowledge, no one said they did not vote because of, you know, the printing issue. However, this woman said that, you know, the election was stolen and refused to concede to the now current governor, Katie Hobbs. She did the same thing Donald Trump did in 2020. When the election result did not go in her favor, she decided she was not going to concede. Yeah. Another Republican, this time at the gubernatorial level. And now it's deep down to the congressional level. Last Tuesday, Virginia held some elections. 
and there was a contested congressional race between two Republicans. And it looks like the incumbent Republican was unseated. Rather than Congressman Bob Good concede the race, he said he wants to have a recount. Now, according to Virginia law, you're entitled to have a recount if you're less than 1% from the margin of defeat. He's within that margin. So a recount makes sense. His opponent didn't oppose a recount. Now, now that the recount is almost done, he's still losing. Now he goes on to another conspiratorial claim that one particular city in his district, Lynchburg, Virginia, he says they had some irregularities. He's alleging they might have stuffed the ballot boxes. All kinds of crazy outlandish things. And now he's saying he doesn't want that city to have their results certified. He won't certify which is not his job. That's the county's job and then the state's job to certify the election results of any city or county. So Congressman Bob Good, a conservative member of the Freedom Caucus, is refusing to leave Congress even though it looks like he was unseated about a week ago. Yeah, another Republican. So if you keep in count, that's Donald Trump, Kerry Lake, and now Bob Good. What is it about the Republican Party when they don't get the election results they want? They throw a temper tantrum, come up with wild, audacious conspiracy theories, alleging always voting fraud. Now this was a Republican on Republican. Both of them are extremely conservative. Both of them are MAGA nuts. So I had no dog in the fight. So he's alleging that another conservative Republican cheated to oust a conservative Republican. That's what you would have to believe in order for it not to be simply the case that he just lost and he's being a sore loser. It's crazy, you all. And this is what Donald Trump started. This is the snowball that he allowed to roll down the hill. This is why democracy is so important in this 2024 election and why Donald Trump can never be president again. He ruined and ended the peaceful transfer of power. Now when senators and Congress members, governors, they don't feel like they are necessarily in inclined to transfer power peacefully either. Yeah, this was the precedent he set. That's what January 6th is about. And that's exactly why he doesn't deserve immunity. Yeah. No, I, I can't wait to find out whether this United States Supreme Court is going to try to grant him criminal immunity whilst he was president for orchestrating an insurrection against his own nation. I can't wait for that determination to come down. Yeah, we're on the Supreme Court watch for the former president's immunity bullshit. That's what I consider it, bullshit. The fact that they wait till the last minute to make this determination Right in the front door, I would have made it. No, you can't orchestrate an insurrection against the nation that you took an oath to serve and protect against domestic enemies. Only problem is he was the domestic enemy. And that's, you know, he's taking the oath against himself because he was the domestic enemy. Yeah. So, no, he, he shouldn't be granted any immunity, in my opinion, but we'll see. But this, you all, this is a bad look for the Republican Party. 
three different Republicans in three different states, three different election years, have all pulled this stunt of not wanting to concede races they clearly have lost. No matter how narrow the margin is you lose, you lose. If you lose by 58 votes, you lost by 58 votes. This man literally got on the phone and talked to the Secretary of State in Georgia and demanded that they find him 11,000 more votes. Doesn't matter that you lost by 11,000 or 1,000, you lost. Yeah, Donald Trump, Carrie Lake, and Bob Good. They should never be elected to any political office. I'm aware that Carrie Lake is running again for what now? Senator? Yeah, apparently senator. No, she's going to get clobbered. Because you know what? Just like Donald Trump, the American citizenry doesn't appreciate what he did by being a sore loser. The American citizenry doesn't agree with Carrie Lake. Arizonans don't agree with her. She, mark my words, Carrie Lake is going to lose much larger to Ruben Gael out in Arizona this year in that Senate race than she did the gubernatorial race. Why, you ask me? Well, in my humble opinion, Arizonans don't like sore losers. Americans don't like sore losers. That's not a thing that we gravitate to. You know, we're taught good sportsmanship. You win. You congratulate the team on a good game. You lose. You congratulate the team on a good game. This whole notion that you don't concede when you lose free and fairly. You start blaming the referees. Oh, it was the referee that did it. This is what they did with the election workers. Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, they started blaming the election workers. All over the country, said people in Detroit who were counting the ballots were stealing votes. Same thing they said in Philadelphia. Same thing they said in uh, Gwinnett County in Fullerton County. Because those people didn't vote for Donald Trump. And they knew they weren't going to vote for Donald Trump. They didn't want them to have their vote counted, though. And so that's why he tried to, you know, steal people's votes. And then when that didn't work, they were just going to send some fake electors. People who weren't the legitimate electors of the state. Yeah, it was a complete plot to subvert the will of the American citizenry. You know he's going to get asked about January 6th. This is the first time he's been in public at a debate since January 6th. That question is definitely coming up to both of them. Because he says, you know, the January 6th people, the mob that he had attacked the nation's capital, he says they're political hostages. Well, that means that he was the leader of the mob who ordered them to go in there. I already knew this. I already knew he was the insurrectionist that led them in there. But I want the American people to see him admit it. Prime time. Thursday, at the debate, J.J. Tapper and Dana Bash admit what he's been saying all along, that he was the one orchestrated January 6th, the nation attack. Not Nancy Pelosi, not Nikki Haley. He was the one that did it. He ordered the Proud Boys to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it should be fun. Get your popcorn ready for the debate, you all. I'm just saying. In this situation, though, with Bob Good, the congressman out of Virginia, you know, the Republican House ought to come to him and tell him he's got to pack his bag. He's not the nominee. 
He won't be the candidate running on the ballot in the fall. He's got to go. You know, but that might be hard to do because they didn't do it for Donald Trump. A lot of Arizonans in the Republican Party didn't do it with Carrie Lake. They didn't tell her to go somewhere and sit down. She lost the election to Katie Hobbs. And I don't believe they'll do it with Bob Good. They're not going to tell him to go somewhere and sit down. No. How could they tell him to go somewhere and sit down when they didn't to Carrie Lake and they won't to Donald Trump? doesn't make much sense to me. This is what happens when you open Pandora's box. When you allow for people who you know are sore losers to participate in a competition where the outcome could be that they win or that they lose, but they won't accept the fact that they lost. You know, Bill Maher has been saying this for a while now. That if Donald Trump loses in November, he's going to show up in January 2025 at the inauguration. If he's not in prison by then. But he's going to try to show up. And just claim that he won't, regardless of what we the people do. He's going to say on the debate stage that he didn't lose the 2020 election. Yeah, it should just be a simple question to me. To me. Do you concede that you lost the 2020 presidential election to President Joe Biden? Yes or no? To both candidates. Because you can ask the question to President Biden. Do you concede that Donald Trump lost the election to you? And the president will say yes. And Trump will either say, no, he didn't lose the election, or yes, he did. He can lie to the American citizenry. But I don't see how this man is allowed to run again when he's still telling the big lie that he didn't lose the 2020 election. We know he's not president, right? Maybe that's why he had those classified documents, because he still thought that he could, you know, be president. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to all make sense now. It's starting to all make sense. It, it doesn't make any sense because you're dealing with a raving lunatic in Donald Trump. But it starts to make sense when you operate and start to think like a raving lunatic. No, we've got a huge problem now with, you know, this seeping down to the congressional level. You know how many tight congressional races there always are in America? They come down to a hundred votes, maybe a thousand, sometimes less than a hundred. And now you're just going to have people coming up with wild conspiracy theories as to why they don't want to leave or concede when they leave. And it seems to be all the Republicans doing this right now. It's a horrible look for their party. And this is why I wouldn't vote Republican in 2024. Nobody. I wouldn't vote for a Republican to be a dog catcher at this point. I'm too concerned that they don't, you know, honor democratic principles, time-worn democratic principles. I'm too concerned about that they're not going to honor those things. So I can't in good conscience vote Republican for anybody this year. Yeah. I'm just going to know what I can do and what I can't do. Have I ever voted Republican before? No, but I voted independent and Green Party. Yeah, no, typically I don't vote for the Republicans because, you know, I live in a city. Republicans are not pro-people who live in cities. 
they kind of operate like Donald Trump, thinking like the people in Milwaukee are horrible people. So, I mean, people who live in cities don't generally vote Republican. You know, I just wanted to bring that to you all's attention. This Congressman Bob Good, he's not conceding. He's saying that a small little city in his district is responsible for him losing. And he doesn't want that small city to certify their vote down. In other words, he's sounding batshit crazy. That he just won't get up and leave. And you know, this is going to ruin his political career. The, this mistake that he's doing, being a sore loser, in my opinion, he's done now. Because, well, let's say this. Let's say he lost the primary. This conservative new guy that they find, he doesn't pan out so well. Because he only serves a two-year term, Bob Good could come back and challenge him two years later and end up retaking the seat. But now that he's pulled this sore loser stuff, Americans do not like sore losers. Donald Trump is going to find this out. Millions of Americans will not vote for Donald Trump in 2024 simply because of January 6th. Even some of his most die-hard supporters will not vote for him. They voted for him in 2016 and 2020. They will not vote for him about January 6th. That's one of the biggest things where he's losing support. And he can't gain that support back. That was a bridge too far for a lot of people. That was it. You attempt a coup. No, America doesn't do coups. They don't do that. You shake hands. You be ingratious of your opponent. And you move on. Because if he had done that, he could have come back in 2024. And possibly beat President Biden. It's possible. It's possible. But after he pulled that January 6th stunt, no, not a chance in hell. Not a chance in hell. No, he's a national security threat. He's a liability. He's everything. He's everything. When that case comes down, if the Supreme Court doesn't grant him immunity, and we start a trial for January 6th, Possibly mid-August, maybe late July, early August. If that January 6th case starts early August of 2024, he's done. Because all of that shit that's involved in January 6th, that case, that's the big one. The documents case, uh, you know, that's important too. Don't get me wrong. But we saw with our own eyes, live on television, January 6th. That's the one that's nearest and dearest to people in terms of us as citizens for what he tried to do. The scheme he and his cohort concocted to overturn our democracy. That one's the one that matters. And that's the one that the American citizenry has said they want adjudicated before the 2024 election. We want to know, based off of the jury of his peers, whether when the evidence is presented to them that he did indeed, you know, do what the government has alleged he did. Yeah. That one is important. Do I see this trend of people not wanting to concede elections continue? 
until there's accountability for what Donald Trump did, yes and no. I think that there's going to be a lot of racists outside of, you know, where they can even allege it. But there are going to be some close races across the country where the Republicans no doubt will try to allege that there was voting fraud that occurred. This seems like their strategy. This is where they're putting a lot of money into in 2024. So it seems like they know that record numbers of women are going to turn out. And they're preparing for losing by saying they didn't lose. Yeah, that's what it seems like they're preparing for. So, you know, that's why I'm going to vote personally myself and against all Republicans. Because I want the defeat to be resounding. Not a way. No, just resounding. They have to be decimated. Electorally, the Republicans in 2024 have to be decimated. MAGA and this movement has to be purged from the American society. Period. We can't keep going on with people who don't want to abide by free and fair elections, but want to participate in them, but don't want to abide by the outcome. No. You don't get to participate in a system if you don't want to abide by the outcome of the system. That's not going to happen. So MAGA has to be purged at the ballot box by the American citizens in 2024. All of them, in my opinion, have to go. There's the trash bin. November the 5th. Put your trash out to the curb accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, to me, that's what has to happen. We've seen three examples now, all Republican, of just being complete and other sore losers. That's the only way I can see. All three of those candidates that I mentioned, Donald Trump, Kerry Lake, and Bob Good, they knew full well they lost to their opponents that ran against them. And yet there was a persistent, to this day, refusal by all three to concede. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you can be mad and not show up at the, you know, swearing in ceremony at the inauguration, but you gotta go. So, you know, that's, that's all I got, you know. This is, this is not good. You're looking at, what you're looking at is a Republican Party that's illiberal. They, they, they're undemocratic. They don't believe in the democratic process. That's what you're looking at. The entire party like this now. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm telling people they better pay attention to this because, you know, they're all playing the Donald Trump playbook at this point. Where if they don't get the outcome that they desire, they're just not going to concede. So, be aware of that. Keep that on you all's radar because... I think that's going to be a persistent story November and beyond of this year.